please join me for the call to worship. Come Holy Spirit, come. Breathe on us and awaken our spirits. Set us on fire with your love and dwell among us as we now rise as we are able and we come together as a church singing glory to God's name. come this day as we come and sing our hosannas on this particular day on Pentecost the birth of the church be with us now as we come to worship this day with you <coughs> through your son Jesus the Christ amen. amen you may be seated good morning and welcome to worship here at the Lucky <coughs> Metropolitan Community Church on this Pentecost Sunday and this Pride Sunday here in Milwaukee we welcome you if you're worshiping with us online we ask that you click the uh, box that you uh, are worshiping with us or leave a comment in the comments so we just know that you are with us this day. For those of you here, um, I invite you to fill out a green card and put that in the baskets uh, when <coughs> we do offering. Reminder that today is the Pride Parade uh, following today at worship. So after worship, um, stick around. Uh, the board is doing their annual uh, pizza pre-Pride pizza lunch. So have some have some lunch and then join us down on the parade route at 2nd and Greenfield so we uh, can march as a whole church at 2 o'clock down uh, 2nd Avenue. We're still doing pie in the uh, pastor's face a, to uh, have a chance to put a pie in my face in two weeks on Father's Day on June the 19th. Um, as you can see that you're falling a little short of the goal and um, so hopefully if you meet the goal we'll get to have that. If not, I get to choose who gets a pie on from me. So um, get your tickets. Um, there's the forms in your bulletins. If not, you can also do it online. And that's all I have on this uh, Pride Sunday. So with that, as we continue, let us hear God's word. Our epistle lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 16, taken from the Inclusive Bible. When the day of Pentecost arrived, they all met one in one room. Suddenly they heard what sounded like a violent rushing wind from heaven. The noise filled the entire house in which they were sitting. Something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. These separated and came to rest on the head of each one. They were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages 
as she enabled them. Now there were devout people living in Jerusalem from every nation under heaven. And at this sound they all assembled. But they were bewildered to hear their native languages being spoken. They were amazed and astonished. Surely all of these people speaking are Galileans. How does it happen that each of us hears these words in our native tongue? We are Parthians, Medas, Elamites, people from Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Pergia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya around Cyrene, as well as visitors from Rome, all Jews or converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs too. We hear them preaching, each in our own language, about the marvels of God. All were amazed and disturbed. They asked each other, what does this mean? But others said mockingly, they've drunk too much new wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven and addressed, and addressed the crowd. Women and men of Judea and all you who live in Jerusalem, listen to what I have to say. These people are not drunk as you think. It's only nine o'clock in the morning. May God bless the hearing of these sacred words. Please rise as you're able for the reading of the Gospel. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Acts chapter 9, verses 31 through 43, taken from the Inclusive Bible. Throughout all Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, the church was at peace, building itself up, living in reverence of God, and growing in numbers with the consolation of the Holy Spirit. While Peter was traveling throughout the region, he also went to the saints living in Lydda. There he found a person named Aeneas, who was paralyzed and had been bedridden for eight years. Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus Christ heals you. Get up and make your bed. Aeneas got up at once. All the inhabitants of Lydda and Sharon, upon seeing him, were converted to Jesus. Now in Joppa, there was a disciple, a woman named Tabitha, Dorcas in Greek, who never tired of doing kind things or giving to charity. About this time, she grew ill and died. They washed her body and laid her out in an upstairs room. Since Lydda was near Joppa, the disciples sent two couriers to beat her with the urgent request, please come over to us without delay. Peter set out with them as they asked. Upon his arrival, they took him upstairs to the room. 
All the townswomen who had been widowed stood beside him, weeping, and showed him the various garments Dorcas had made while she was still with them. Peter first made everyone go outside, then knelt down and prayed. Turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, stand up. She opened her eyes, then looked at Peter and sat up. He gave her his hand and helped her to her feet. The next thing he did was to call in those who were believers, including the widows, to show them that she was alive. This became known all over Joppa, and because of it, many came to believe in Jesus Christ. Peter remained a while in Joppa, staying with Simon, a leather tanner. Hear what the Spirit says today. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Amen. come to prayer with me this day. Almighty, holy, and precious one, we thank you for your name that lives and reigns in this place. We thank you for the God that continues to be with us in the good and the not so good. We thank you for the Holy Spirit who promises us to be our comforter in times of need as well as energy and fuel that keeps us going. It is in that spirit of God that we open ourselves now to you and to all that you would have for us this day. In the sacredness of this word and through all the openness of our hearts and minds, bring us together, O God, through your word and fuel us and inspire us. So now I ask that you touch my lips of play, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day and the words that come from my mouth, along with the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, be they ever acceptable to you. In Christ we pray. Amen. So this morning, fitting enough, we begin our Pride series, Vibrant, Inclusive, Progressive. And if you want to know what those acronyms mean, it's basically you have the VIP. And six years ago today, the exact date of the fact was my first Sunday in the pulpit. 
June the 5th. And six years ago, I presented the very question, what does a healthy church look like? And why should that matter to any of us? Did it matter to us back then? But even more, does it still matter to us in this present day? And if you were to still ask the average person on the street today who doesn't go to church, why they don't go to church, I think you'll probably get the same responses and answers that we would have had even from the same people six years ago. That it would be the same criticisms, the sarcasms, and even the excuses of why they don't go to church. It may have been because they may have had some scandal that either they were involved in or witnessed to within their previous church. Or some type of hypocrisy that was happening in the day. Or even some type of excuse that they weren't going to be spiritual for whatever reason that may be. Though I do think that you may get an added excuse of that it all must have to do stemming out of COVID and the drama COVID and the drama that we've been dealing with over the last few years. But I still believe that it doesn't take a great deal of insight to realize that these reasons really should be the reasons in not attending church or even being a part of a community of faith. If the good news of Jesus is really the good news, then we should be having that be reason enough. So in other words, I will say that it is a healthy and vibrant living in even of a dynamic church is the exact same thing that Luke talks about as we heard in our scripture reading from Acts this morning. Now the passage we heard that is actually a combination of an epilogue and a prologue of the book of Acts. If you recall, the young church had been under attack while at the same time it was being persecuted. And even though through all of it, they still came out of it just fine. Maybe even stronger, even healthier than they were before. They were growing in depth and breadth, and even from the epilogue that was already there, all had vanished. We go through all of this. The two accounts of miracles that were at the hands of the apostles, because all of these things in Acts are the things that should be the recipe for a healthy and vibrant church. And I'm saying this all again because a healthy church aren't just the things that happen to appear out of nowhere or pulling them out of our back pocket. And of course, my favorite adage, the church doesn't, isn't a place to go for one's entertainment on a Sunday morning. Now don't get me wrong, I know that we all come to listen to the great music and the great preaching that we get, and of course, you know, having somebody as wonderful as Brendan, we get all of that put together in a, in a Sunday service. But I do know one thing, that this congregation is a congregation that has always stuck together through the thick and the thin, and even through the midst of things, still having to desire within us that we have that good news of the Gospels. And going back for a moment to the first part of the scripture lesson that we heard in this morning's reading, where we hear Luke telling us that throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, the church was at peace. And I think it's fascinating because you've got all these three different regions that are completely different from one another. You have Judea, which is strongly and prominently Jewish. Then you have Galilee, which is known as the land of the Gentiles. And of course you have Samaria, where you can say the average Jew would run for the hills that the minute they brought up any aspect of Christianity in the conversation. Luke doesn't tell us or even say that the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria, by using the term, he uses it all as the church, meaning one church but many congregations, all of which come together in being united as one body or one church. Now, we know this from all different forms that all are different because the Jerusalem Jews and the Galilean Jews and the Samarians were all different in their own ways. 
but at the same time they saw themselves as being together as one church along with the healthy and vibrancy that they all brought. It's what brings everybody together in order to become that one church. While there will always be different directions on how things are, along with having one common commitment, that we always have Christ and the Gospels within each of us. There needs to be an attitude that it just doesn't be the apple of being off the tree. But it applies that all of us are a part of that, and we all are part of that bits and pieces and the brick and mortar that form the building. Luke tells us that these churches were at peace. And Saul, who was a persecutor, was converted at least for the moment because the times were a bit easier. Now, the word peace in the Bible gives the meaning much more than just absence, but rather that it's a presence of God through our relationships. And did you know that the most distressing medical problems that all people suffer is the fields that come through autoimmune diseases. This is where our bodies sometimes mistake themselves for all the friends elsewhere in our body. Mistaking it sometimes for enemies and they go against one another. You can also say that it's conceivable that Luke along with all these other churches had this sense of peace within one another, yet at the same time, they all were at conflict at some point. And we know that a church that is taken up within the fightings within one another will never go forward. Well, having an army that you would shoot them or that you're shooting at your own people only means that we're not thriving and becoming that stronger point. Another hallmark that Luke gives us in the church has strength. And I will say that this particular congregation is strong and a vibrant congregation regardless of the size that it has been over the past 50 years. I will share a different interpretation of what we heard in Acts this morning because I think it explains it a little bit in more detail. It says that things calmed down after the church had smooth sailing for a while. All over the country, Judea, Samaria, and Galilee, the church grew. They were permitted with a deep sense of the reverence of God. The Holy Spirit was with them, strengthening them every step of the way. They prospered wonderfully. So how does that still all happen? How do we continue to build the church that we are? And as a church, how do we continue to build it up to be more stronger and vibrant and healthier than ever before? All good questions that we should be asking each other. But know that Luke isn't speaking about growth in the church necessarily from its programming and from just giving of our talents, but Luke is talking about the growth in complexity and about the church's withering in its inner life. My honest opinion, what builds or continues to build a strong congregation is still having that strong foundation. This church definitely has a strong foundation, and that foundation, of course, is all of you, the people. All of you who, people who make up the foundation, that brick and mortar, that we call ourselves Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. Now, if we didn't have that strong foundation to feed from, I could probably guarantee that we wouldn't be here over those last 50 years and plus, and we wouldn't be still in existence in this community. We know that all happens from the leadership on down, which points the finger at me a lot of times, but along with the board, but it's also a trickling down effect to you, the congregation, or the people of the church. While we heard in scripture this morning that Peter was traveling throughout the region, or what I call, he was on a preaching tour, more or less, or an evangelical type of mission, is he was out teaching the churches that he visited to learn how to build and how to be that healthy and vibrant church. But as a church, we have gone through a lot of transitions, 
trials and tribulations. We've gone through the winds and the fires and the break-ins and the pandemics and you name it. But through all of that, this church stuck together. Looking after our own, but we also continue to be that strong church that we are because of the dedication and the devotion that each one of you have and the passion that you have for your church. I mean, you wouldn't be sitting here Sunday morning after Sunday morning if you didn't have the passion or the love for your church. And if we go through some of Paul's writings later on in Scripture, Paul tells us that God gave us the apostles and the prophets, the, the evangelists, the pastors and the teachers, and the wisdom to equip the saints. And it was that to do all that work to build up the body of Christ. But folks, the main thing is that you are that body. You are those saints. Take note of what we just can't farm out at this time. Things that we can't resource out to do for others, that things that we can't do by just picking up the phone and placing that to-go order and expect to all drop in the middle of our lap. What we're really being told is that we are to build ourselves up through our faith, and as we begin to build or even rebuild our faith, we begin to strengthen each of the faith that is within each of us. And the one thing that I have shared many times over and over, probably through the six years that I've been here, that it's by building or even building that if we got off that path, that we need to get back on to order to make that foundation stronger and firmer in order to build and allow the church to go to the next level and beyond. We've gone through so much in 51 years. But it's also upon everything that we do right here in this congregation, allowing us to be that vibrant and inclusive and progressive church that we say that we are. The biggest element in order to make all of this happening is simply one thing. It's being engaged. And I've said this time and time again, I'm sure you're probably tired of hearing it, but the great aspects of building our faith is our engagement through all the portions of the, of the, all the facets of what we are as a church. We're all great at saying that we, that we are, aren't good at what we're doing sometimes, but we also aren't doing what we should be doing, but at the same time, we still want more. When it comes down to the reality, sometimes we fall short. And sometimes it gives us the inspiration that we will talk the talk, but we don't necessarily follow through with walking the walk. In order to be better involved, it's not really just about writing a check and putting it in the offering plate on Sunday morning, or just by coming to church on Sunday morning, or by engaging in other aspects of church life. Well, today, today is... Pride Sunday or Pride Weekend here in Milwaukee. And as we've had our presence in, in the community over the last few days at Pride Fest, we also had that opportunity to be present in the community again later today. If anything, that's now an invitation for all of you to join those who've already committed to engage in marching with us today in the parade after worship. And a little, little PR announcement, stick around again for some pizza and all that, and then we'll go down and, and be together with all of the other folks in our community. So that kind of concludes my public service announcement for this morning. But I know for a fact that, that it's so easy for all of us to say, okay, I've been there. I've been a part of the church for God knows how long. I've done that, I've done this. I've got the t-shirt and the DVD, so I'm going to sit back and let somebody else do it. Or let's dump it all in the lap of the pastor and the board. Or dump it into those who continually give throughout the course of the time. The reasoning sometimes is passe, and as much as it is that we really have no meaning or depth when we say those things. It's never too late to be involved. 
It takes each and every one of us in this church family to grow and to continue to grow. And you're probably wondering, why, why am I going back and rehashing, if you want to say, all of these things? Because in order for us to continue to be a part of this community that we are, we need to stick together and keep building that foundation, not just in this building, but out in the community. We offer so much for a congregation this size that there isn't something that would intrigue somebody to be engaged in any part of it. It's not all about giving of our treasures either, as well as not if that it's not a bad thing, but in order to keep everything running and smooth, it also takes our time and our talent to complete the equation. I know as we come into these summer months and some of our programming goes on hiatus, that when we come back in the fall to the fold of everything, we come back to a lot of things. Even through the pandemic and through all those things, we continue to have our theology on tap do our brunch with the pastor when we were able to. Any of the other ministries that we have as our, as our prison ministry and our HIV ministry and some of the facts of trying to be a part of the trans community. Things that you might even consider doing as we go down the road is even considering taking part in what we do every fourth Sunday of the month that is Pack the Pantry. It's never too late to grab one of those sheets out in the narthex to see what things that are needed to provide the help, to help keep the food pantries vibrant at, 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 at vibrant and at courage, and to keep those who are in need well taken care of. Christ went out into the world as a leader feeding the flocks and making sure that in those flocks that they also return the favor. By going out into the world and feeding others, and each of us are that flock, that we should be out there sharing the wealth of that nourishment. That nourishment of the gospel, the nourishment of who we are as a Christian church. Whether it's through our time or our talent, or even when God has instilled to us to give back in other ways. <clears throat> Six years ago, when I first arrived here, I not only challenged the board, but I challenged you, the congregation, to double and double again. And if you don't remember what that was all about, it was that when we double, we then double again, and we double, and we keep going that, and that's what we do to build that foundation. Now, while we haven't done the best job at it, it's still a long way to go, but it's always great to know when people come together to become a part of a church family as we move forward, that we concentrate. This is your community of faith, your church family, not mine. And I know that a lot of times that we are excited because we are a church that each Sunday that we come together and we have that, have that family or that bond. But we need to extend the family and go out and bring more back in so we can build the family kind of what you call it, procreate. So invite your friends or family or people that you know to be a part of this community of faith. Invite those that you have conversations with to check things out. See what it's like to belong to a community that accepts everybody for just who we are. It was so enlightening over the last two days and I'm sure those who were at the table at, at Pride Fest can tell you there were multitudes of people who were looking for a church home. And one in particular that kind of struck me was a, a, a couple, husband and wife, maybe in their 30s or 40s, looking for a church home that they weren't going to be preached at with having, as they put it, the Bible being shoved down their throat or being told that they aren't accepted for who they are or how they look and all that. And when they came to our booth and kind of learned a little bit about all of us, it was that, that peak of interest of, oh, I didn't know that there was such a thing out there. 
the concept a lot of times out in the world with other other faith denominations of faith when it comes to the acceptance of everybody is what a lot of times we will say that they're tolerant they're not accepting they're tolerating it just to get you in the door now we go back to the scripture lesson one more time that that we are to walk in that fear of God and when we do that the comfort of the Holy Spirit then multiplies and if we listen to Peter telling us to multiply that we first go through that proclamation of the Gospels and then now Luke tells us that when Saul was persecuted the church in the church while in Jerusalem that things began to multiply as the word of the prophet started to get out and as we heard in the scripture that through the conversion of the Gentiles through the influence of the Greek culture we as Christians are able to do that not only by talking the talk that we do so well but we need to walk the walk and take our testimonies out into the world take it out into the world so it becomes contagious there are so many opportunities today when we're out there being with people especially when we're standing there for the how many minutes or whatever when we're gathering to line up for the parade all the other people that are around us and of course you know we'll have other faith traditions around us because there are other other churches that will be in the parade but it's th that's the time to connect with those people to show who we are and to show that the loving of the acceptance of who we are. John Wesley, who was a great Methodist theologian, says that we are to do all the good that we can do. And by all the means and the resources that we have within us, by doing that, and we can say that in all the places that we are, in whatever time and place that we are, but we are to do it for as long as we can. We need to continue to go out into the world it doesn't stop with worship at the <laughs> afternoon. It doesn't stop with the parade when it finishes. But it continues through us, at least through this entire month being Pride Month. But it also continues on each and every day after that. We need to continue to pour out that loving generosity wherever and however we are able to do it. I want to close with one passage from Matthew that always strikes me. And it says... Let your light shine before others, so that they may see your good works while giving glory to God who is in heaven. So happy pride, folks, this Sunday. Let us get out and continue to spread the good news of who we are and the inclusiveness and the love that we are to one another. Blessings upon everybody. Amen. Good morning, everybody. My name is Mark. I'm on the board here at Milwaukee Metropolitan Community Church. And I'm here to do offering at this point in time. Now I want to remind you, for those of you worshiping with us in-house, the green cards, if you would please fill it out so we know you're here. And as kind of putting out the prayer chain every week, I'd love it if you put down some prayer requests so that I can add something new this week. I also want to remind you that today we celebrate Reverend Tory's sixth year anniversary with us. If you would like to give something, a gift towards his anniversary celebration, please take one of the white envelopes in the pew, put pastor appreciation on the top, and then write your name inside, and put your gift inside as well. For those of you that are worshiping online, you can certainly go to our website and send us an email with prayer requests. You can like us on Facebook or put a comment in if you're watching on YouTube. And you can certainly make donations online for any of the special events that, we're, that I'm talking about. I also want to remind you that it's not too late for Pi and the Pastor. It's two weeks away. As Reverend Tory mentioned, well, we're, so I don't have the, the, the bar chart here, but we're sort of kind of not close to our goal. So I encourage you to give. Just think of how much fun it'll be to throw a pie in his face rather than <laughs> having him throw one in our face. Um, so I encourage you to give so we can try and meet that goal. So I want to say happy Pride to everybody. It's so nice after two years of not having a Pride celebration to kind of be back in public and marching and sitting at the, the festival grounds and even just telling everybody happy Pride out in public. Uh, 
I enjoyed it. I enjoyed being at the grounds yesterday, just watching the myriad of people and how they were dressed and what they were doing. And the people who came up and talked with us, I had nice conversations with so many people. And it was just a festive day. I like the fact that I'm part of this church celebrating pride. I support this church highly for a number of reasons. Not only just because it's nice to be a part of a church at Pride, but this is a church where I feel like I'm really totally worshiping God. This church, this worship service, all of you help me become closer to God and closer to Jesus. I also feel we have quite the message to continue spreading. No matter how many years we've been out celebrating Pride, people still don't get it. God created you exactly as you are, and God loves you for who you are. What an important message to continue spreading, and I feel like this church does a great job at it, and we can be out there more and doing more. So I support all the ministries we do, all the ways we're out in, the, in public, supporting a pastor who gets out there and interacts with people. It's highly important to me. I know there's probably many reasons why you all support this church. But today at Offering, this is where I ask you, please continue to support this church, our ministries, our pastor, our board, all that we do. Support this community of friends. I really do hope you feel like this is a community of friends. So with that, I pass the baskets and once again, say happy pride. As we celebrate Reverend Tory's six year anniversary here, I'd like to invite him up front here with me. Reverend Tory, six years, my goodness. That's For me, flies. it's gone by fast. <laughs> Others, maybe not so fast. Maybe in your ministry, not so fast. But it's been a wonderful six years. I am so personally appreciative, and I know everybody in the congregation is, of all that you have done for us. We are a much different church now than we were six years ago, that's for sure. We, I enjoy the worship service you present here, your sermons, the music that you pick and do. Sundays are just a great worship experience for me. You've put in so much time and effort with the board, doing things, getting our ministries going, being out in the community, <coughs> connecting with other leaders, and encouraging us to do the same thing. <coughs> Excuse me. You have worked very hard over six years. And I'm sure there's a few extra wrinkles and gray hairs because of us. Well, <coughs> maybe we can't or see the gray hairs, hairs but there's probably a few extra. Good guys out there. <laughs> <laughs> He's all choked up over this. So yeah. so but anyhow, on behalf of the board and on behalf of the congregation and personally, I want to thank you for your service here. I want to thank you for the time and the love and the care you've given us. We have just a little something for you. you. Happy anniversary. I pray that your <coughs> ministry will still continue to grow and flourish while you're here with us, that God will lead you in wonderful and new directions, and maybe some of the same old directions. <laughs> and, and I look forward to working with you. We all look forward to working with you for your seventh year here. Thank you. A few more gray hairs of what, what's <laughs> left up. Yeah. Have Brendan come up here and join me for a minute. A little over... Three years ago, um, our former sec our former second director of music, um, Josh, came to me and said that he needed to step down and uh, take care of other matters in his life and all of that, and at the same time wasn't leaving me empty-handed or leaving us empty-handed, and said I have a a wonderful replacement um, for me and. Um, we sat down and um, had coffee with Brendan one afternoon and uh, after the conversation actually offered him to be our director of music and he actually came to us on Palm Sunday of all of all holidays whatever and we didn't get to uh, I didn't get to recognize it during Holy Week and all of that this year but Brendan's been with us a little over I think it's three years we were trying to calculate it the other day but um, he has done so much in the life of this church as well and um, uh, there's kind of a little bit of a standing joke amongst my colleagues that they all want to steal him away from us uh -huh. because um, at, during Holy Week when we were at Christ Church, they didn't have, uh, they don't have a director of music or a uh, uh, accompanist at this time. And it's like, well, we'd love to get him. I'm like, well, sorry, he's not available. So, <laughs> uh, 
So we're not we're not letting him go any anytime soon, at least if I if I have my say. But the board and, and I, and as well as the congregation, wanted to do a little something for you to recognize your anniversary oh. with us. And um, so of course, you know our beautiful. wonderful Dan and, and all of his handiwork with the glass, whatever. Um, we did a little something to acknowledge your three years with us and hope for many more. So as we come to the table on this day, this wonderful day of celebration in all different facets of the life of this church, I invite those of you who are worshiping with us online, if you haven't already done so, to go and get your communion elements so you can take part in this great meal that we're about to take part in. For those of you here in the sanctuary, I ask that you, as always, to wait to start pulling things out of the baggie so we rustle and make noise all at the same time this morning and uh, to go forward with that. On this day of Pentecost, may the Spirit dance within you. May the Spirit dance with you as well. May God's grace be poured into your hearts. Come, Holy Spirit, to fill our hearts with love. May God's word become your language of praise. Come, Holy Spirit, to teach us new songs of thanksgiving. With a word, you scattered chaos. God of wonder and joy, creating everything imaginable and those things only you could envision. Pouring out your breath of life, dolphins frolicked in the seas, dogs chased their tails in circles, songbirds twittered to welcome the sunrise. And we were shaped in your image so that we might enjoy life in your goodness. But we tried to build a tower to reach those temptations just out of our reach, convinced that they would make us happier than your joy. Old men, old women, young girls and young boys, those we call prophets and those we call meddlers, came speaking your words of invitation so we might return to you. But we thought that they were drunk and foolish or didn't have a clue of what they were really talking about of the importance of life. So you chose to send your child who spoke your whispers of his heart, calling us to trust in your voice once again. With those who dare to imagine your wonder, with those who wonder what is going on, we sing of thanksgiving and praise, a filling of our hearts. and the God we dance and sing about is the God who has proven God's self to us over and over again that's why we come and the same Jesus gathered with his disciples in the upper room all those years knowing that there would be times in our lives that we would need that blessed assurance of the resurrected God so it was in that night in the upper room as Jesus gathered with all of those in, of his disciples and those who were with him taking the bread from the table at the end of the meal, blessing it and breaking it, and saying to each one of them to take and to eat, for this is my body given for you. And each and every time that you eat of this, do so in remembrance of me. In that same fashion, at the end of the meal, Jesus took the cup of wine and saying the traditional blessings as he passed it to all who gathered, but telling them to take this gift as a new and everlasting covenant one that reminds us of God's loving encouragement and that gift that is given to us, but to take and to drink this and often, and as often as we drink of this, to do so in remembrance of him. May we recognize Jesus in this place as we continue to break bread together. Will you please pray with me? Once again, as you did so long ago, pour out your spirit upon those gathered in this place as called by you and upon the gifts of gracing this table with the bread you feed us as you feed all creation so we can go forth each day to offer hope to those who are forgotten, to share joys with those who grieve, 
but by the words of love for those who hear only judgment and hate. With the cup you nourish us as you fill all of creation so we can be poured out each day for the children bullied in the schools, for the seniors that are mistreated by society, for those most vulnerable who bear the brunt of the budgets and the things that are upon us. And when your spirit comes at all ends and all times and space, that we gather with our sisters and brothers around the table of grace and wonder where we will find it filled with the spirit's breath so we can sing your praises of all eternity God in community, holy in one. Amen. church alive, that church that is vibrant, inclusive, and progressive. So now as we go out into the world this day and each and every day, let us go out into the world through God's tender mercies and protections that is given to each and every one of us as we know it and given through us through God the Creator, God the Savior, and God the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. I invite you to sit for the post <laughs>